Happy Thursday, everybody. It is day 12 of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Lainey, how you doing? I'm great. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm great. This I'm great. great. How are you? <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot how social <laughs> skills work. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can hear them. That's good. Uh, well, we're so glad you guys are with us today. We are going to be going through some scripture. Uh, we're going to be approaching that scripture through the SOAP model, which I'll explain in a second. But if you want to grab your Bibles, uh, whichever translation uh, it makes sense to you, I'm reading the ESV, Laney's reading the NIV, but grab your Bible or get out your your uh, app and uh, your Bible app and follow along. We'll be in 2 Peter chapter 2 and uh, would love for you to join us in that. So um, Laney, actually, you're gonna I'm going to have you read. Oh, and yes. the SOAP method is essentially while we're reading, while Laney is reading, uh, and you're following along in whatever you're reading, uh, look for a verse or listen for a verse that stands out to you. That's the verse we believe that the Holy Spirit is drawing to your attention. Uh, underline it in your Bible, and then uh, what you're going to do is on a separate piece of paper or in a journal that you have, if you have one of those, uh, you write out your verse, and then that's the, the S of the acronym SOAP, S-O-A-P. Uh, the O is, what is that verse saying to you? Like maybe, or try to say it back in your own words. It's just trying to really grapple it, right? Like uh, um, they say that you learn more about something when you share it with someone. Same thing is here, like when you're trying to put it in your own words. If you really attempted that, you, you'd take some time to comprehend that verse. Right. And then the A is uh, is application. You're going to need to apply it and in some way, shape, or form uh, to your life, maybe to a circumstance, situation, attitude, whatever that might be. And the last part is prayer. So S-O-A-P, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. You're going to use God's help, and that means talking to him and asking him for help in that. So Lainey, 2 Peter chapter 2, take it away. All right, it's a long one. Here we go. Yep. False teachers and their destruction. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who, brought, who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into, into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he had heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, they are not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings. Yet even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not heap abuse on such things when bringing judgment on them from the Lord. But those people blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like unreasoning animals, creatures of instinct, born only to be caught and destroyed, and like animals they too will perish. They will be pay paid back with harm for the harm they have done. Their issue of pleasure is to... Caru what is that? It's broken up. Caruse? Carouse? Carouse. See, now I know the word. In broad daylight, they are blots and blemishes, revealing in their pleasures while they feast with you. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed and a cursed brood. They have let the straight way, they have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Bazir who loved the wages of wickedness. For he was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey, an animal without speech, who spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These people are springs without water and mist driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them. For they mouth empty, boastful words, and by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, while they themselves are slaves of depravity. 
For people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn their back on the sacred command that was passed to them. Of them, the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit, and a sow that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, this is an aggressive thing, right? He's, mm -hmm. just, he's uh, uh, really got some things to say about these people that are really stirring up all this trouble. But uh, I, like, I like how, I mean... I really just want to highlight this whole last chapter here, the last mm -hmm. part of the chapter, not specifically because I like what it's saying, but it just reminds me that God is just. That, mm -hmm. that you know, it, he's starting at verse 9, he said, then the Lord knows how to rescue the, the godly from trials. And so he gives us history and, and saying, this is how God did it for, the, for these guys. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. if he knew how to do it for them, he'll know how to do it for you. Oh, and by the way, by the way, the angels, they've already got their punishment, you know, the, the, the ones that fell from grace and mm -hmm. turned their back on God. And all these people who do all these things, God's got punishment reserved for them. It's kind of like, you know, um, it, it's, it's that, the, akin to that verse that, that says, vengeance is mine, says God. That yeah. belongs to him. Yeah. And we just have to trust. Our job is when we're going through trials, when people are persecuting us or people are saying things about us behind our backs and lying about us or doing us and causing us harm, that we have an advocate. Mm -hmm. We have a God who's got our backs. And it's not our job yeah. to be that person that has to fight back. Yeah. You know, we don't have to fight back on social media. We don't have right. to be keyboard warriors. We don't have to defend our character. That's God's mm -hmm. job. Yeah. And it's it's actually his. He's like, this is mine. Vengeance is mine. It's his possession. And we just got to step out of the way and trust that these kind of people that Peter is describing here, God has something in store for them and it does not mm -hmm. none of it's pretty there's yeah. just none of it that's pleasant at all and so for me my my takeaway is the the reminder in verse 9 that that god has a response to all these things and uh to everybody who lifts their finger and their voice against me um god's going to take care of that and yeah. and for me that just that provides me peace and i know that i just get to rest in him because he's my refuge he's mm -hmm. my strength he's my yeah. stronghold he's my tower and uh, so I don't know. That's for me. I'm I'm kind of uh, in a praise position right now. Sure. That's just a that's a, a build me up moment. What about yeah. you? Yeah, I really like how you said that. And I see, you know, I think we as creatures also desiring justice, but not having the authority to determine what's just and what's not. We want to be like, yeah, but we are gonna punish those people. Mm -hmm. Look how bad they are. The Bible even yeah. says they're bad. Yeah. So it's our job to decide, and then that puts us in a position of, well, now we're acting like we can decide who these people are. Mm -hmm. And that, and that now makes we us have, God, by the way. Yeah. Scary, scary position. Yes, not, that's, not, that's not why we were put here. Right. It's not what our job is. And that's freeing because that's a lot. I don't, I don't have the emotional capacity to treat someone like that. Whoops, I spit on your Bible. That's sorry. okay. I'm sorry. Um, but also I know I can trust that God knows people's hearts and truly knows how justice works. And yeah, I agree. We don't. Now, I think in the moment, sometimes I feel like I have the emotional capacity mm -hmm. to exact vengeance, yeah. but every time I've acted that way, yeah. there's always that conviction on the other side, yeah. like, crap, I messed it up again. Yeah. This was something I should have just trusted God with right. and walked away. It would have been better because I wouldn't have my hands mm -hmm. dirty. And also, I would be in a more trusting place. Yeah. It's just peace. It's, you, you are robbing yourself of all yeah. that. So, yeah. anyway. Sometimes it feels good yeah. to talk about how I've been slighted <laughs> and persecuted. It that does. feels great. It does. But that's kind of pursuing those, like, to speak in Christianese, yeah. worldly, fleshly desires. Oh, yeah. Those are nice desires. Yeah, they feel, they feel they, great. They feel great it in the moment. Yeah, to, but they're, to, be righteously angry. Yeah. <laughs> as much as I can be righteously angry. Well, what about you guys? Let's turn the camera lens on you. How about you? What did you see today? What, what stood out to you and what is speaking to your heart? What are you being, what are you encouraged by? What is, what makes you want to shout hallelujah or shout like, oh man, that just stinks. You're going to work on that in me today? Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
uh, often like to say, what makes you want to throw your Bible? That's mm. the stuff that really is speaking to you. Uh, journal on that. Get a, get your observation, application, and prayer down. And uh, for us today, this is where we're going to end. But Lainey's going to lead us out in prayer. So, Lainey, go ahead. Jesus, thank you that you know us and that you know our hearts and um, you know the ways that we've messed up and you know the ways that we haven't, God. And I just pray that you would be with us every day, reminding us that you are um, you are love and that you are the only one powerful enough to know what um, what justice looks like, God. And I pray that you protect us from making those decisions sure. on our own, from from judging people and deciding that some people aren't aren't worth loving or that some people you know, are, are evil or, or need punishment. God, I, I pray, especially just for myself today, that um, you would protect me from those thoughts and help me to love people better. I pray that you would continue to give us wisdom through the rest of our days um, um, here in the 21 days of prayer and fasting. And we just thank you for this opportunity. In your name, amen. See you all tomorrow. Love you. <laughs>